We have spoken about three gas laws that help us explain in their own individual way how gas molecules function on a macroscopic scale in the macroscopic gas system. Now we've looked at Boyle's law, which answers questions such as why do balloons blow up or explode when you compress them by increasing pressure? We've spoken about Charles' law, which answers questions such as why do car tires deflate in the winter and inflate or expand in the summer? And we've also looked at Avogadro's law, which helps explain questions such as why do balloons become larger when you blow in air? Now all these three laws help explain macroscopic concepts of gases. Now, now we are ready to combine all three laws into a single super law that puts all three relationships into a single formula, into a single equation. And this equation is known as the ideal gas law. Now recall that pressure is inversely proportional to volume, which is exactly what this guy says. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume and directly proportional to N and T. That's exactly what Charles' law and Avogadro's law tells us. Now the only problem in this top portion is that we want to go from a proportionality sign to an equal sign. The way we adjust this guy, this top guy, so that we can equal them is by multiplying our right side or adjusting our right side by some constant r. This is known as the ideal gas constant. So one problem remains. What is r? So from experimental results, data shows that a temperature of 0 Celsius and a pressure of 1 atm and any one mole of any gas will give us 22.4 liters of, of uh, a volume. And that means we have four unknowns, we have four unknowns, I mean we have four knowns and one unknown. And that means if we plug the four knowns in, we'll get our unknown, namely our constant R. So let's plug these guys in, P times V divided by T times N, simply rearrange these guys, plug our values in, and we get our gas constant R is equal to 0 0.08206 atmospheres times liter divided by Kelvin times mole. Now this number might change if we play around with the units, but for these units, this will be our gas constant. So the question is, how does an ideal gas law help us? Well, it helps us in the following way. If we know three parameters, we can find the final unknown. That's exactly what this formula tells us. If we know, for example, N, T, and V, we can find P. Or if we know P, V, and T, we'll find N. Or if we know P, N, and T, we'll find V, and so on. So let's do an example. Our example states that we want to calculate volume that 0.5 grams of methane occupies at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atmospheric pressure. So we have one known, we have two knowns, our, at our pressure, we have three knowns, grams, because remember, grams will translate into moles. We can find moles using grams. So our first step will be to find our third unknown, to find our number of moles. If we find that, we have three knowns and one unknown. We'll solve for that unknown, namely this guy, and we'll get our answer. So to find the number of moles, and we simply take our number, 0.5 grams of methane, divide that by our molecular weight of methane, grams cancel, and we get moles on top. So 0.5 grams divided by 16 is 1 over 32, which is 0.03125 moles. We take this moles, plug it into our formula along with not 25 degrees Celsius, but 273 plus 25. Then 1 atm, and we'll get the following numbers, plug that in, and we get 0.76 liters of methane will take up or occupy at this temperature, this pressure, and this amount.